such a powerful force. Amen. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis, real hard place to find. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I want to talk to you this morning about the power of origin. When I say the power of origin, I'm talking about the beginning, where we came from. And as a young man, I wandered through life, and I never had this answer. You know, where did we come from? Uh, and, you know, it's easy to say, well, we came from God. But to understand origin is a powerful thing, to understand your source. Origin is something from which anything arises or is derived, the source in which something came. The source from which something comes provides and determines its identity, its ability, its capacity, its potential, and its durability. Now, I'm going to say that again. The source from which something comes provides and determines its identity, ability, capacity, potential, and durability. The product is always linked to the source. If I, if I showed you this, you're smart enough to tell me, Pastor, that is a wooden bench, and that came from a tree. That's right. You're so good, man. You look class. You're doing good. So, so the, the source of this right here was something that grew from a seed that came out of the ground that was produced later into a bench. When I look at you, when I realize your source, where you came from, you came from God, of course. So Genesis chapter 2, are you comfortable? Don't thank y'all because we're a little bit smaller in here. I'm going to stop doing what I do. Ain't going to happen. So same is true of humanity. No matter what we say of others, their true nature came from the Creator. That's why labeling people is so harmful. The origin of Genesis 2, 7. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The King James Version says nepesh is the word. The Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You know, a few months ago, I told you that when I looked at this and I realized that we came from dirt, that basically to understand mankind is to understand that we were all dirtbags. Right. right. That we all came from dirt. And, and it's kind of a tough thing to say, to look at yourself and think that, but realize that your bodies, as you get older, are starting to deal with it. And we love, we love this dirt, don't we? Amen. You washed your face this morning, combed your hair, brushed your teeth, put on your lipstick, sir. Amen. You got yourself ready. You know, we weren't made. God could have made us out of anything. He could have took gold and made us all gold. And we would have all been shiny gold. But we would have all been the color of gold. He could have made us out of celestial stones. He, he could have picked something beautiful. But God looked at the cheapest thing on earth and chose dirt and originated us and brought us forth from the source of dirt. It made up, and as a matter of fact, when he took red dirt, he made red man. When he took dark dirt, he made dark man. When he made white, uh, a light dirt, he made light man. It's funny, I mean, wherever the dirt came from, that's how he created us. And we love this dirt. We put deodorant on our dirt. Ladies and gentlemen, we manicure our dirt. You pay big bucks to go get your nails trimmed. From your dirt, amen. You exercise your dirt. You have surgeries on your dirt. Hello, amen. But little bit do we deal with our soul, our spirit, and what we've got inside of here. We're always taking care. We got dirt suction and dirt tucks. We paint our dirt. We take dirt selfies all the time. We act as if our dirt color makes us more special than other people's dirt color. Hallelujah, amen. And then what do we do? We tan our dirt. We finally get dirt color, and then we tan it. We get it a little bit different color. We, we, we look after that. The substance from which something comes expresses its worth. Did you know that? That if you find diamond that's been crushed from coal, and you look at that diamond, you go, that is special. That's worth something. But when you look at dirt, you cheap as dirt. Amen. It don't get no cheaper than dirt. Can I get another Amen. Dirt is the only environment that you can put a seed in. You can't put a seed in gold and bring forth anything. You can't put a seed in diamonds and bring forth anything. You can't put a seed in other th any, any other substance other than dirt to bring forth something. So God took dirt and brought us forth from it, and he actually put seed inside of us. And even though we are dirt, God said, you know what? I'm going to put the seed of my DNA inside of you, and the world is waiting to see you bloom. It's waiting to see what happens. Amen. It may be a dirt bag, but we got a gift from God. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, if you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. Well, I'm going to let you sit down in a minute. Did you hear that, David? I'm going to let him sit down in a minute. Can I tell him? 
Okay. Last night I went to one of the few weddings I've ever been to that I wasn't doing. I can't probably count three that I've been to that I didn't do. So we're at this wedding. David's doing the wedding, and I'm watching it because it's kind of fun to watch your protégés to see how, how they're going to do. So I'm sitting in the back in this, we're in this backyard, and, and about 40, 50 people back there, and, and Lori's with me, and I'm watching this for a moment, and, and, and David brings the bride and groom, and, man, he's doing good. He's waxing eloquent. Matter of fact, he waxing so eloquent, he's forgot to tell everybody to sit down. And I'm watching the crowd from the back. I'm watching y'all from the back. And I'm watching them kind of squirming and they're sweating. And, and, and they want to sit down, but they're waiting on the preacher to give the word. And so I look over at Lori and I say, I'm fitting to tell them to sit down. She said, mind your business. Stay back. You know, this ain't your wedding. Why are you trying to get involved? And I thought, well, I could. So I slipped up and I touched the, the man on this side and I touched the man on this side. And I said, y'all sit down. And they sit down. As soon as them big guys sit down, everybody sat down except for the groom's daddy and he's about 6'3 he's the only one standing there, these guys up here and he's standing he's looking around like this right here you know and, and all of a sudden David points at him and says something to him and he looks around and he realizes I'm the only one standing I won't even tell you what he said but it was a humorous moment for me Say Corinthians again, if you only look at us, you might well miss the brightness. We carry this precious message around in unadorned clay pots, amen, in these dirt bags of our ordinary lives. That's to prevent anyone from confusing God's incomparable power with us. Colossians 1, 27, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of his mystery, which is Christ in you. And you've heard me say that over and over, the hope of glory. Amen. He's inside. You might be full of dirt. Made of dirt, but there's such glorious things inside of all of us. Your origin, you may have came from the earth, but you're going back to him. Amen. God put the supernatural inside of you. I like what you always say, David, that God puts the super on our natural. Amen. Powerful thing. Thank you for the word, God. Help us to grab hold of it. Bless this congregation and those watching. In Jesus' name, everyone said? Come on, baby and big. Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. So, again, we are the body. So, but the essence of the human being is in his spirit. That's why when we die, our spirit returns to its source in which we were drawn out. Again, doing funerals the way I do and being with people that have passed, I realize so quickly that when that spirit is gone from this earth suit, from this dirt, if you would, it's over with here on this earth. We only have so much time here. I'm, I'm, I'm putting myself in a place where I refuse to allow the confusion of this world and all the rhetoric and all the talk and all the, 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 the backbiting. And God, I remind myself, one of the problems that people have is they forgot their origin. They forgot where they came from. They forgot that it was God that put us here for a reason. Imagine yourself thirsty, standing by a well, sweat pouring down, cramps in your legs. you at first stages of dehydration with a bucket in your hand. And 30 feet below, there's cold, crisp, refreshing water. And you've got a 28-foot rope. That moment of stretching to reach to get. Imagine last night before you went to bed, you plugged your phone in. Because that product has a source that's connected to it. And yet, we'll walk through life and we'll unplug. I know many of you came this morning to get plugged back in. Amen. To get rejuvenated. But the life is, the truth is, when you unplug yourself, or if you allow things to take you away from your source, Christ Jesus, the next thing you know, you start diminishing in power. You start diminishing in a desire to live and to have purpose in life. When we detach ourselves from our source, things go wrong. We either malfunction or spiritually die because our source, our origin, God provides again. Our identity, our purpose, concept, worth, value. You didn't even realize how valuable you were until God, until you understood that you were connected with Him. Uh, this is why it's so important in life. Uh, our preservation, productivity, our meaning. People with no connection to God walk the earth living far belief that, belief beneath, excuse me, their privileges and capacity. They're victimized by ignorance. They, they don't understand. You know, ignorant, ignorant just means you don't know that you don't know. You understand? I get around some folk that are just ignorant. It just, they don't know that they don't know. And trying to tell them sometimes can cause a problem. But knowing the answer of where we came from gives us meaning and purpose. Without the answer, life is nothing but an experiment. Without an answer to move through life, it's just an experiment we're going through. So this is why mankind searches through space. 
We, we, we study primates by refusing God's answers. Again, we, did, we didn't come from a one-cell uh, amoeba, we, uh, an explosion, gas. Uh, you know, I make fun of this all the time. Monkeys. That ain't where we came from. And if you've ever believed that, then you bought into the damnable lie of evolution. Amen. And somehow we evolved out of something over millions of years. That, that, that is such a, a denying our true source. The great separation, just as a plant dies when it is detached from its source, the soil, or a fish dies when it's detached from its source, the water, and, if, and when a person is, separates himself from his source, God, he too will naturally malfunction and die. You've got to stay connected to it. When you have the prayer meetings, it's about connection. When we do our connect groups, it's about connection. Everything we do drives us back to the source. And if this church doesn't promote source, our origin, and where we came from, then we miss it as a, as a group of people. Amen. To go back to him. The fall of mankind. At the fall, we lost our sense of identity, our self-worth, as well as our sense of personal value and significance to the world. The fall has to do with Adam and Eve and what happened in the garden. So basically, man lost his sense of who he is, where he came from, what he's capable of, where he's going and why he exists. Being cut off from our, natural, our original purpose, we function below our true abilities and potential. I, I asked God the other day, and, and this is one of those soul-searching moments, Lord, am I finished? Am I done? Have I maximized the churches that I pastor? Have I maximized my potential here? Is there a need for me to go somewhere else? Or am I done? Am I finished? Because these are things that I ponder in life. I, I struggle with because I want to fulfill that which God called me to do here on this earth. And as I'm doing this funeral on, on Friday, I, I realize there was no better. And this is not arrogance. This is confidence. There was no better man that could have stepped in that pulpit and looked at that packed church full of weeping teenagers and young people who had just lost a friend in an accident, be able to stand there and speak to them with confidence and remind them that there's a reason they are here. And if they don't connect, get connected to their source, they will die a tragic... It, it, it's not, death is not... Death without God is tragic. Death with God is triumph. Amen. And to get to that place in life that we're live, leaving the land of the dying, going to the land of the living. A lot of people think this is the land of the living. If this is the land of the living, we're in trouble. Right. Amen. Because the truth is, we're dying here. Amen. We always die. We, we, we die daily, the Scripture teaches us. So we don't know who we are because we don't know where we came from. People have this DNA attitude about searching the, the DNA trees and finding their leaf and all this stuff because they want to know what? Their origin. Amen. Their source. And, and, it, and somehow it will explain the knothead you are. What you're doing is you're looking for a justification through your genealogy to uh, defend your anger, your lust, and your issues. Amen. Now, you don't have to go that far to get that. Amen. Just go back to daddy. Whoever your daddy was, just start right there. That's probably where it started from because all us dads take the blame. Mm -hmm. So we can't be fully productive because we don't know where our ability and our strength came from. We lack knowledge and wisdom for making good choices because we believe whatever seems right to our limited perspective. We become fearful, apathetic, or overly competitive because we're trying to survive in an increasingly unnatural environment. And by the way, that which you came from naturally does affect you. If somebody in your family was full of fear all the time, they will pass that on to you. Bless their heart. But they just naturally do that. If you're scared, Johnny, don't run with sticks. You put your eye out. That has happened once. And whoever that mama was, she ain't shut up about it since. Oh, you know about it? We, we, we ran, we played, we got outdoors, we did things, you know. Uh, we, we picked up snakes, and, and, and I ain't saying that's smart. I'm just saying we learned not to be scared of everything that moved. I'm mowing grass the other day. I'm mowing grass a lot. It's great peace for me. Man, and I, 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 I rode right into one of the biggest spiders, right between two magnolia trees, and that thing had a, a bag of eggs on it. Like, I mean, this thing was bigger. It's bigger than a, a dollar bill. It was just like that. And I rode, and I first felt the way up hit me, and then I stopped. I put that thing in brakes, and that thing was right here in my face. 
And I'm staring, I mean, I, could pick, I saw the eyeballs <laughs> looking at me. And all of a sudden, that thing darted up that tree, and I realized it was more afraid of me than I was of it. And I tore its little home down. <sighs> and I took me a breath, and I kept right on going. I didn't say I wasn't scared. Even I didn't get a little nervous at the moment. Ain't nothing like, we used to ride horseback all through the woods and stuff. And people say, I want to go first. I go, go ahead. Because I rode up through the woods and had them banana spiders crawl up on my back because I'm the first one through. That, that trail, you know, it's, I, I'll be a pathfinder at that moment. You be a trailblazer, I'll be a pathfinder. Hallelujah. You go ahead. You know, we latch onto superstitions, amen, and substitutes for the true source in our effort to find significance and peace. When you're separated from your source, realize what it's like. If you dare walk away from your source, from the origin, from Christ Jesus, we, we, have, we, we end up with power without purpose, money without meaning. You might have money, but you ain't got no meaning for it. Position where our passion for living. Houses, but not homes. Having children, we don't nurture. We protect animals and trees, but we kill the unborn. There's a disconnect that took place. How did this happen, Pastor? We thought we could live apart from our true source. That we could stay away from God. Therefore, in what I see in the world right now is people... And they're trying to live among their own gods and they forget who their source is and where they came from. And when you declare independence, you have to create your own identity. This is why we have gender confusion. You don't know where you came from. So you'll be a boy today, a girl tomorrow. Amen. You don't know what you are, where you came from. You get all mixed up in this area. You become responsible for your own destiny. The problem is without being connected to the source, failure is inevitable. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. The Lord God took the man, put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. So when, after God created man out of the dirt, then he creates uh, Eve from his side. Then one of the first things God did was give Adam a J-O-B, a job. Amen. As a matter of fact, can I be honest with you? He got the job before he got his wife. Just think of that just a minute. Don't marry somebody until they got a J-O-B. Can I get another Amen. Uh-huh, okay. I'll get a job after we get married. Pfft. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat it, you will surely die. Now, I've read that scripture over and over, and I realize that what he's saying here is, is the day you rebel against me by disobeying my command, you're going to surely die. The concept of death here is not referring to physical termination. Adam, Adam lived hundreds of years. Hundreds of years after that. Rather, death refers to the severing of the relationship man had with his creator, his source. It was the demise of man's identity, his sense of self-image, self-worth. And the natural result of separation, true death, spiritual death, is the spirit being detached from its life source. Can you imagine walking with God? I, I know we talk about doing that now. But walking with God in the garden? Having fellowship with God? Amen. Talking with him? Uh, having this new creation about, about who you are and seeing Eve, the beauty of this beautiful woman. And, and here's Adam, and, and he's walking with God, and God's talking to him. Amen. Adam's asking questions. God's asking. And to be separated from that, that if you have a, not a cat, but a dog. And I say that because I'm not, uh, and I know cats can be really wonderful for people. But I can tell you this about dogs. My dogs go through separation anxiety. They got to touch you. And you, to, to my dogs, I am their life source. I feed them. I pet them. I exercise them. Love them. Give them water. Every, if, without me, now I know others could do it, but really without me, these dogs are going to die. They're going to suffer. Because of that, they're always touching me. I mean, I have to get a break from them sometimes. You know what I'm talking about? Get off. But that paws on you. And I, I bring that up to say this. I, not to say we need to be more like my dogs, but there needs to be a desire to always touch him. To be connected. My food comes from him. My source comes from him. My life comes from him. Everything I am comes from him. And when Adam rebelled, amen, uh, against his source, the inevitable uh, uh, penalty was death and separation. If you cut yourself off from the source, it's you that suffers, not the source. Now, if you catch anything I say, catch this. The soil never killed the plant. Nor does the water the fish. It's not the creator that does the damage. He doesn't have to. So the statement, you shall surely die, wasn't a threat but a result. People ask me, Pastor, why is God so mean? God is not mean. 
When you separate yourself, if a fish separates itself from the water, the water ain't bad. The fish separated. The dirt wasn't bad. The plant separated. If you separate yourself from God, it's going to be a result. You're going to spiritually die. Things are going to happen in your life. So stay connected to Him. We remove a plant from the soil or a fish from the sea. You don't need to kill it. It's going to die on its own. Likewise, if a person takes himself out of connection with God, he dies spiritually. It's only a matter of time before destruction sets in. The Creator brings life, not death, into the world. Jesus said, I came that you may have Life and life more abundantly. I want you to stay connected to understand. Life is in the source, the origin. Wh whoever stays attached to the source will have life. Jesus said in John 15, 4, Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. This abiding, this touch point between the vine and the branches is where the life-giving nutrients flow. If I stay connected to Him, and by the way, you are as close to God as you want to be. God, God never says, okay, you move toward me, I'm going to run from you. No, you're as close to God as you want to be. And if you want to grow in God, it's up to you. Pastor, why are certain people really more passionate about God? I struggle with it because they want to be. It's up to you how much you want to read, how much you want to study, how much you want to witness. And, and the issue is, it's not about making you a fanatic or a radical to put you separated from other people. It actually forces people to be attracted to you. Amen. They like being around you. I don't boast, brag uh, about other than being in God. But I get phone calls and messages from people all the time that, that, that see. Uh, you ever just want to tell people, I ain't all that? Miss Diane, you know what I'm talking about? I ain't all that. I struggle in life. I have the same fights you do. I just look better at doing it. But I'm going through the same things. But the bottom line is, I, I have this, the same power that helps you. I, it's where I plug into. The same Jesus you talk to is who I talk to. Wow. Amen. The one that forgives you, forgives me. Wow. So I just stay close to Him. And if I can remind myself of my origin, my source, and stay close to Him, it, it changes my life. It affects me. And the bottom line is, I can be, I can, I can skip Monday, but Jesus is waiting for me on Tuesday. Wow. He said, man, look here. I saw you take a day off. Get, your, get, get better. Get back over here. Amen. Because you can't stay away from me. You'll die if you do. So I long for him. Psalm 42, 1, Jesus, uh, uh, David, my bad. we get too excited here. As the deer pants the streams of water, so my soul pants for you. David, yes, he messed up. Yes, he was a mess. Yes, he was a warrior. Yes, he, he took out people's lives. But there was something about him, his passion for God. He never forgot it. Amen. Even during confusing times, he understood, I, I, I just got to be near my source. I got to stay near him. And, and that un Old Testament understanding, we, we know so much more. We got Jesus to look to. They look toward him, but he, we look back at him. And he has this passion for God he, to, to seek, to long for, to thirst, to wait, to know, to love, to hear, to respond. Psalm 27, 4, he said, One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. You know one thing we got to have? We need people. It ain't about just you coming to this house. I understand this house is important to all of us. But to, to have an attitude that God, no matter where you're at, I just want to stay connected. I see the confusion going on in the world. I, I see people, I see, be honest, they, they, there's people trying to start race wars back up. They're trying to remind people of a, of a past that was horrible for others. It may not have been as horrible for you, but I, I look back over all of that and I realize, yes, there have been people that have been done wrong, but they were humans that were done wrong. It wasn't all blacks that were done wrong. It was humans that were done wrong. It wasn't all whites that were done wrong. It was humans that were done wrong. It wasn't all Asians that were done wrong. It was humans that were done wrong. If we can pull the color out of this thing and remind ourselves that we're humans, amen, and look back at this and say it was the human race, yeah, all people have been done wrong. But if we, red, yellow, black, white, brown, don't get back to our origin, understand our connections, Stay connected to Him. How are we going to handle this life? 
How, how do we move through this? this uh, I got to remind myself, if you're sick, you're my friend. I'm not going to isolate myself from you because somebody told me you had a virus. I won't do it. Oh, yeah, I'll mask up, glove up, whatever I need to do. I got to protect my mama and your mama. I understand that. But I, I can't let people die alone. I can't let people go through life without love. Hey, Amen. I, I got to stay connected. So I, I think sometimes this is how we have to do it. God, I'm going to stay connected to, to you and my brother. I got to stay. And sometimes the only way, my dad, my dad had a mean way of teaching. He get hold of a try to teach me about electricity with a lawnmower. And he'd tell me, he'd reach down and grab that spark plug. He'd hold the end of it. And then he'd touch me. He'd say, pull that plug. Pull that, pull that starter. I'd pull it. And that thing run through him and he'd hit me. And he talked about being a conduit. And I know that's kind of, y- y'all all know that story. Uh, when I was a kid, I used to sneak off over to Rex Johnson's house. Y'all t- I heard talk about Rex last week, Miss Ruby. I'd bring my BB gun with me. And I'll never forget the first time I took that BB gun and laid it on that electric fence. You start learning conduit, conduction. There's something about you and how you conduct yourself that introduces other people to Jesus. That I'm a connection between heaven. Get this in your head. There's you reach people I'll never reach, and you will introduce them a conduction. Amen. You are a conductor in life. Amen. How you live is important. And they see Christ through you. And you're able to con- connect with somebody else. When I pray over people, it ain't Jerry. I want heaven to walk through me and touch that person. Amen. When I pray for them. I, I want to be that conductor, if you would. Amen. Paul said this in Philippians. How, how, do, you, how do you do this, Pastor? Pastor. You have to set aside time to build relationship with God. Now, when I say set aside time, it could be on your drive to work, at home, but just some time to talk to Him. It, it's never over spiritual. It should not always be in King James Version. Just learn how to talk. That was for you, Tommy. Amen. It, 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 just learn how to talk to God. Just talk to Him. Second, savor God's Word to you. Right now, you have met, the gospel means more to you now than it ever has. I promise you it does. As a pastor and the pastors that I pray for, I've never been in a year where we have seen such a a protest, riots, COVID, dust from Africa, storms, people going through. And I say, God, I can only tell people this. Stay connected to your source. Stay connected. And if I stay connected to Him, I can trust Him with all my heart. Paul said in Philippians 3, What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in His sufferings, becoming more like Him in death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now, you know me. When I read Scripture, I say to myself, that sounds good, but I wonder what the message Bible says. And this ain't on your overhead, but listen. Paul said, again, the very credentials these people are waving around is something special. I'm tearing up and throwing out in the trash don't need it along with everything else I used to take credit for and why because of Jesus yes all things I once thought were important are gone from my life compared to the high privilege of knowing Christ Jesus my master firsthand 
Everything I once thought I had going for me is insignificant. And then the message says, dog dung. Y'all don't need me to interpret that, do you? I got a couple of vets in the house that understand dog dung. I, th- I don't think I have to interpret that part. I've dumped it all in the trash so that I could embrace Jesus and be embraced by him. I didn't want some petty, inferior brand of righteousness that comes from keeping a list of rules. When I, when I could get the robust kind that comes from trusting Christ, God's righteousness, I gave up all that inferior stuff so I could know Christ personally, experience His resurrection power, be a partner in His suffering, and go all the way with Him to death itself. If there was any way to get in on the resurrection from the dead, I wanted to do it. Woo! When I read that, I said, God, I'm so far away the kind of passion that Paul had the kind of life that Peter led but I just want to get closer to my source in 2020 and do what you called me to do would you stand with me I remember years ago I preached a sermon called his grip don't slip he said when you put your hand in my hand I'm going to hold on to you We've all got children, grandkids, or some kid we had to look after that took off running. We, sometimes we mess up and say, hold my hand. If you ask the child to hold your hand, that child can let go. But if you snatch their hand, that's why I love the scripture. It says, that I, when I put you in my hand, nobody can take you out. His grip don't slip. Amen. When he holds your hand, when that child tries to run, I ain't letting you go. Amen. I got you here. Stay connected. Your origin means more than you'll ever know. Amen. To know that. He gives you one passion, one goal, one unhindered opportunity to stay connected to Jesus. Head bows, high close. Those watching through the internet. I'm realizing more and more there are people that are catching this. And I pray in the name of Jesus you stay connected to your source. That the more connected you are to Him, the more powerful you're going to be. The less confusion you're going to have in this life. God, help us stay close to You. Lord, I pray for those again that have been backsliding, sliding back away from You. That this is a time to come back. To stay close. To guard our relationship with You. Not let anything take it away. You're so precious, Jesus. You're so good. You're so good. I stand on your promise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Look at me, church. The scripture says that there's coming a day that the dead in Christ will rise. And we which are alive and remain will be caught up with him. I had a spiritual grandpa that said once, it ain't about us going up, it's about him coming down. It's known as the rapture, the catching away of the church. But one day, he's going to come back and we're going to go up. You know what all that's about? The source, the origin. Connecting with the product again. We are his product. And he's only going to take so long. You know, he's taking us right now in little bits. He's taking a brother here and a sister there and a brother here and a sister there. But one day, he's going to pull us all up out of here. Now, I don't know the when. I don't care about the how. I just want in on it. Amen. And then the scripture says, then we'll be changed. And we'll know each other as we're known. It's so good to get to know people. Because you're going to know them there. Keep connecting with people. Amen. We're going to see our loved ones again. We're going to see family again. Oh, happy day. Happy day. And my prayer, well, it's not even prayer. I just know this. I know the nature of God. That when we get to heaven, there won't be a jealousy or an envy or or anything that would cause a a fleshly disruption because you will no longer be flesh. You ain't going to fight with that flesh no more. It won't be about who got this and who got that. Uh, 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 and none of that stuff going on. Somehow God's got this thing worked out for us. What you do here will matter there. Amen. 
You wave at one another one more time. Give God a praise. Have a seat.